the highest revelation of blessing I ever received was locked up in federal prison. You know, um, the revelation was that I made some bad decisions. Uh, I done some stupid things. And <clears throat> that if I would learn to concentrate on the blessing and who I am in Christ, yep. right. that I would come out on the other side yeah. a different person. That's right. uh, you know, we're faced with uh, tough times all the time. Come on. Uh, but if you'll slow down and look around, I know uh, I was talking to Malik the other day, and we've had some stuff going on, and I just got to thinking what my life was like five, six years ago and what it's like now. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's easy to get caught up in the little yeah. troubles right now. Come on, come on. But if we'll slow down and think about where we were right. and where we are. Because yeah. I promise you, if you are obedient, God is moving yeah. you into a new season. Right. Yeah. We're not obedient. Come on. If we're not following the word of the Lord. That's right. We're going to be in perpetual cycles. Wow. The devil wants you in a cycle. That's God right. wants you in a season. Don't preach my word. And, and seasons. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. the revelation? The kingdom of God is a is a garden, <laughs> not a convenient store. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. The dope, the woman, the uh, the man that you're not supposed to eat. That's a convenient store. That's right. Come on. Because you got some pain, right? Anybody got any pain? Anybody ever been let down? Anybody, anybody ever been through some trauma? Amen. See, the convenience store represents Amen. the dope. That's yeah. right. Yeah. An ungodly relationship. Wow. The alcohol. Wow. The things of the world. Yeah. See, but the garden represents the kingdom of God. But a garden requires work. Come on. Right? Okay. Man, it requires work. You got to break that ground up, right? You got to embrace the, the brokenness of the Lord. You got to pray, God, I'm a mess. I'm hard. Father, break me. Crush me. And rebuild me in your Come on. That right yes. there. Come on. Some of y'all trying to get rebuilt in somebody else's image. Come on. The image that you think that, the image that you think God has for you. Right. Wow. Maybe God anointed you to clean toilets. <laughs> and y'all trying to be a famous YouTuber. <laughs> Someone's got to clean the toilet, bro. Right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Too good for the pulpit. If you're too good for the plunger, you're too good for the pulpit around here. I'll dig a ditch with the best of them. So <clears throat> the garden, the ground's got to be broken. The rocks have got to be removed. That's right. The thorns have got to be taken out. The weeds have got to be yeah, pulled up. The, the, the seed has got to be in the ground so the demons can't come and take the seed. That's right. And then you got to fertilize it. Fertilize it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go some crap. Right. Amen. Amen. The best fertilizer. The best fertilizer. I mean, a, a smart man feeds his cow in his field, right? It keeps the grass up. And what are those cows doing is they're eating. They're fertilizing. That's right. They're fertilizing. Fertilizing. That's right. So I'm not telling you you're not going to go through some stuff. You are. But I promise you there's so much more blessings if you'll yeah. concentrate on the blessings if you'll know that you're blessed. So we're going to move into a time of baby dedication. Uh, the practice of baby dedication is rooted in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7 here. Oh, Israel, the Lord our God. We talked about that this morning. Listen, you want to hear from the voice of the Lord? Submit to the, uh, uh, to the elders, the pastors, the teachers, the fivefold ministry gifts of your church. Show up and learn how to hear from God. <clears throat> hear, oh, Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. They... they, they See, back then they were worshiping all kind of liturgy gods. And, and now we, idolatry is, with the American lie, has transitioned to covetousness. Coveting is idolatry in the New Testament. Yeah. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Does God have all your heart? With all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I commend you today shall be on your heart. Listen to me. You shall teach them dil diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house 
and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. Yeah. So we dedicate our children to the Lord. We dedicate them early. This doesn't secure them a place in heaven when they come to the age of accountability. They have free will and they got to choose to submit to God. The reason that we have so many children that refuse to submit to God because they don't know anything about God because we've taken our kids out of church and they're raised by social media. They're raised by, by YouTube videos. They're raised by TikTok and Witch Talk and they're raised by public schools that tell them that there's more than two genders and God created male and female and that is it. They're confused. They're riddled uh, with confusion because they're living a life outside of the protection of God's word. They're living it way out here. They're living it on the broad road and not the narrow road because the man of the house uh, didn't step up and become the priest, the prophet, the provider, and the protector of his home, uh, teaching his kids uh, to live in the fear and the reverence of our Father. See, 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 he started playing the generational game, right? Yeah. Started with the age of enlightenment. But it actually started way back with the Catholic Church. They had Martin Luther come with a reformation, but he got sideways with this uh, Christian nationalism, right? Yeah. And then it got sideways with all these universities and all these churches that somehow think that there's a God that lives in us uh, that no longer has anything to say. Why do I give an eight-year-old a microphone in this church or an eleven-year-old? Because I know God talks to me. Amen. And it's not about me. It's not about why do I give avenues to to twenty-year-olds that have been saved a couple years? Because I know their life. I know their character, and God tells me to. It's not about me. It's not about short grief. It's about raising up men and women of God. But it starts. With you dedicating that child to the Lord. Yes. Psalms 2027, 3 through 5. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. How many people know that children are a gift of the Lord? Amen. Amen. What about when they're sideways? Does anybody know anything about that? <laughs> what about when you when you find them bring a dope in your house? Come on, what about that? They're still a gift. They're still a gift. That's if you raise them right, they're coming back. Yes. Yes. See, see, my mom had a gift. I went nuts, but she had a gift. She also had a gift to intercede. And she prayed until the feds showed up to my house. In 26 months in federal prison, we, we unpack some stuff, right? Amen. Yeah. You know what we're doing today? We're still unpacking stuff. Amen. Yes. Come on, somebody. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of the, of, of the one's youth. Yeah. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies at the gate. And I do enjoy that gates of hell message. Oh, Amen. Man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. After mankind's three falls, in that there wasn't one fall, there was three. The Garden of Eden, the flood, and the Tower of Babel, the Lord commanded that we be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth. As arrows are launched into the battlefield, we as parents and as a local church are called to prepare and launch our children into the next generation as kingdom warriors for the gospel. Come on. So what, what, what do we do? We sin. When Malik goes to drill, he starts a Bible, Bible study, leads a Jehovah, part of leading a Jehovah's Witness to the Lord, to, to the real Jesus, not the fake Jesus. Y'all know there's a lot of fake Jesus out there, right? There's a lot, there's a moral therapeutic Jesus. There's a, there's a socialist Jesus. There's a liberal Jesus. No, Jesus is the Jesus of the Bible. If you don't believe the Bible, you don't believe in the Jesus. You don't believe in Jesus the Christ. So he goes out there and he starts a Bible study, a drill. We launched him. See, because y'all y'all think I'm supposed to send you to some big church somewhere. No, I'm sending you to the parking lot of Walmart to sell something about the goodness of God. Come on. He found a he found a creek out there in the middle of Mississippi. Come on. Come on. Baptize somebody. 
How many testimonies have we heard as we watch Josh casting demons out of people on the workplace? Yeah. Laying hands on them and them coming back the next day and say, I don't know what happened to that knot, but I don't have a knot there anymore. Yeah. And then he has to go back up to Tennessee to baptize people. How many, how many times? We launched them, right? Good. Yeah. Well, you got some babies right now. We're going to make a decision to start them off. So when the Maliks come to the their spiritual fathers in the next generation, it don't take me six months to cast all the demons out of them. They, got, they know who they are in Christ. Come on, yes. Their identity is built in Abba Father. Amen. Somebody follow me? Yes. yes. Let's start our kids off right. Amen. A, a truth is not subjective. It ain't how. It ain't based on how you feel. It's based on the word of God. We're an old-fashioned church. Come on. Christian parents to dedicate a child, make a promise to the not a no. Listen, listen. If you got saved and you really understand salvation, everything you have is his in his anyway, right? Yes. It, it, that, that's the reason oaths are so offensive to God. It's like, God, I appreciate you so much for dying for me so that I can be saved. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to go to church. I'm going to show up five minutes late. I'm going to leave ten minutes early. I'm not going to tithe. I'm not going to give. I'm not going to do anything. But I appreciate you dying for me so that I can be saved. But I'm not going to give you my life in return. No, listen, when you, there is a great exchange. He died, he gave his life, and the exchange is my life for his, his life for mine. Amen. I don't have a dog. Amen. You say, your dog belongs to Hallelujah, my dog belongs to God. Amen. I don't have a house. Everything is used to promote the kingdom of God. Yes, yes. Amen. Including your children. So we don't make oaths, right? Because they're offensive to God. It's like saying, God, you did all this for me, but uh, well, you know, I'll read my Bible once a month or, or you know, I'll pray every now and then. It, it, that ain't how it works. That's not, that's not capital C Christianity. That's little C Christianity. Little C Christians go to hell. I just want to go ahead and tell you. That's the broad way that leads to destruction. <clears throat> and you think, man, that's hard. Man, no, the way of the transgressor is hard. Submit to the goodness and the grace and the power of God and watch God do things in your life that you never thought were possible. Submit to him and watch what God does with your life. That symbolizes the support and guidance of the church community and provides in raising the child devoted to, to, the, to the truth of God's word. Parents who make this commitment to raising their children in reverence of the Lord God Almighty are instructed to raise their children in God's ways according to His word and, according, and not according to their own ways. This is a significant responsibility, but one that is filled with promise. Promise of God's grace and promise of the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You know what you need to raise a teenager today? Uh -huh. You need to be slapped down full of the Holy Spirit. Hey, yeah. I mean, come on. The devil's coming out of 19 different ways. You need to have a prayer life to raise teenagers Amen. in this day and time. Amen. You've heard the statement, it takes a village to raise a child. And I love the sentiment of the phrase, but a village exists in this natural and temporal world. And we may exist in this realm, but we are not of this realm. We, may have, we have been born again and we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. We are strangers, literal yeah. aliens. We're spiritual beings having a temporal, natural experience. That's right. We don't yield to the laws and the opinions of this realm. We live by the laws of the kingdom of God. Amen. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 9. <coughs> now shall it be if you dil diligently obey the Lord your God being careful to do all his commandments which I am confident which I'm commanding you today now listen I want you to understand this was impossible under the old covenant but with the new covenant grace is the imputed power of God yeah. to obey yeah. God 
Wow. That's what grace is. Grace is not a reason for you to sin. And I'm not telling you, I'm not preaching sinless perfection yeah. because I'd be the biggest hypocrite in the right. world. I am told to ask God to forgive my trespasses daily. Yeah. So I say, God, forgive me of all sins, known and unknown. Yeah. God, even forgive me of my sinful thoughts. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> that the Lord your God will put you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings will come upon you. And reach you if you obey the Lord. This literally means they will come up and overtake you. How many people have been blessed, overtaken by a blessing you wasn't expecting? That's what happens when you're walking in the obedience of the Lord. Blessed you'll be in the city and blessed you'll be in the country. Blessed will be the children of your womb, the produce of your ground, and the offspring of your animal, the newborn of your herd and the young. Of your flock. Blessed will be your basket and your kneading boat. Blessed will be when you come in, and blessed will you be when you go up. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise up against you and to be defeated by you. They will go out against you one way and flee in your presence seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing for you in your barns and in everything that you put your hand to. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will establish you as a holy temple to himself as he swore to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. So what we want to do is we want to sever the generational curses over our children. Yeah. And, and, and listen, anybody know an alcoholic whose daddy was an alcoholic? Yeah. Anybody ever know an addict whose daddy was an addict? Yeah. Anybody know the uh, right? So I, I don't, I don't, whatever you want to call it, it's real. Absolutely. Divorce. It, all the issues we have on this, in the, here, right here, all the, are rooted spiritually. And what we've got is we got a bunch of churches trying to treat spiritual issues naturally. You know what you mean? Right. You, right? Trying to treat it naturally. We can't do that. Treat the root, right? No. Listen, if, if I can kill the kudzu behind my house, right? Uh -huh. But I like it because it's like a privacy fence from the neighbor's mm house. -hmm. I just keep it on and get on my <laughs> But daddy had the idea to kill the kudzu. And we got out there, we cut it up. We didn't get the roots up, right? Right. So treating something spiritually is getting the root of it. So you got some roots in you that you've passed on to your kids. Let me tell you how to get the root out of you so it don't get to your kids. You repent. Submit your life unto God. And then you watch your children do better. Amen. Now y'all read my book. <laughs> y'all know what I was like 20 years ago. <laughs> My 21 year old daughter up here laying hands on people and they're screaming, oh. hollering, laying out in the spirit oh. as demons come out of them. Hallelujah. It, 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 you know, and then the little kids running around up here laying hands on people. They're, they're you know, going to let your little kids up here with Hallelujah, come on. <laughs> I need that childlike faith. Amen. Amen. That's just scary. <laughs> you need deliverance well, from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Right. Come on. Amen. So let's move on. Let me get a, a Landon, Hannah Friedman, and uh, Gracie and Nancy Barnes to come on over. I just want to. Um, yeah, there's some babies. Uh, any family member who wants to be up with them, come on. You see Landon dressed up this morning? 